Now I want to move on and talk about a different uh, machine learning algorithm, uh, which is regression. So we have a whole series of different types of regression and classification algorithms. We'll come back to classification. The difference between these two really is regression will predict values for you when the value that you're predicting is continuous so uh, or ordered. Um, ideally continuous because it's, pro it's almost certainly going to give you fractional values but at least it needs to be ordinal, uh, ordered so you need an ordinal value at the very least to do regression. On the other hand classification can tell you, you know, true, false or whether something fits into a number of different uh, areas. I want to do regression and I actually want to start off with the simplest form of regression which is linear regression because if you understand how to do the linear regression all the other regression algorithms work in a very similar way at least for as far as Spark goes. What's underneath the hood is, is very different between them. So we had our code here um, and we had made clusters of our stations. Now to motivate the linear regression I actually want to read in the other data file. So we had looked at the station data. I also have all the data from 2017 which is in a file that looks like this. And so I need to create a different case class for this file. We'll get where we can see both of these at the same time. Case class, I'm going to call it NOAA data. And as you can see, the first element is the station ID. I'm going to use the same name, SID. That'll make it easier when I do joins at a later time. We also have the date for this. And that uh, should be a java.sql.date type. Um, I have the type of value being measured. I'm going to call that measure, and that is a string. So you can see we have precipitation, snow, temperature max, temperature min. There's a number of different things in there. The four I just listed are actually the, the most common ones and the ones that we'll play with for uh, the, the algorithms that we're, that we're going to work with here. And then I have the value for that measurement. And that, well, they're all ints, but I'm going to use a double because that way if I put division in there, I'll get sensible results. There's a number of other fields in here that, that we don't care about for our purposes, and so it's fine if they get ignored. Okay, so I have that case class, and now I need to read in the data. So I'm going to read in the full uh, 2017 file. How about we call it data 2017? And it's a nice CSV file, so I can just do a Spark, and I'll wind up doing Spark dot read dot CSV. But I need to put in a few elements in here. First, I need to specify the schema that I want to use. This is where I'm going to use the encoders, uh, and case classes are products. So I can say the encoder for product of NOAA data and then get the schema from that and I can use that. There is a date field in there. It's not what I wanted to do yet. Autocomplete. I wanted to hit new line so that this line doesn't get too long for you. So I need to specify the format of that date field. Uh, you might recall it's just years, months, days. Uh, no spaces, nothing interesting else in between there, just those, those eight digits. So I need to tell uh, Spark that that's how it should uh, look for the date format. So I'm going to specify the option of date format, and it is in the format YYYYDDMM. Okay, so those eight characters together uh, pulled out that way. Now I can tell it to read the CSV for our data set, which is in data slash 2017.csv. 
once again now so this is a very large file so I'm definitely it is not in my git repository you can go to this FTP site to to get that file uh, or play with other years if you if you wish okay so that will load in all of our data um, and to motivate my regression that I'm going to do I want to pull out uh, how about I pull out the data from one station. I'm going to pick one particular station. Or actually, how about we do one of our clusters? We already have a cluster, so let's go ahead. I want to pull out all of the uh, data from a cluster. So I'll just call this cluster data. And it will be all of the data filtered for, oh actually, first I need to get all of these stations. So let's do cluster stations. This is going to be stations with clusters dot filter so that the output of this, now by default, and we have a print here, by default that is called prediction. And it turns out uh, yeah, that's every one of these algorithms is going to output a prediction uh, that can get confusing over time so I think I'd like for this to be uh, the output to be called cluster so when I build my k-means I am going to set the prediction column to be called cluster okay, that way we have a a better name for it down here where I had said prediction I'll change that to cluster as well uh, we'll see if there are any other places where I'm missing that. So I want to find where cluster is equal to 441. Yeah, it's just a number of a cluster. I believe that one's central in the United States. Um, so though that is all of the stations that I have for this cluster. It turns out I don't necessarily need all of the data from this. All I really need is the uh, ID because I'm going to join this with my full data set to just pull out the data from that cluster. So select SID. That'll reduce a little bit the work that happens inside of our of our join. Okay. Um, now what I want to do is take get the cluster data which will be our data for 2017 dot first off I'm only going to care about the temperatures so um, first thing I'm going to do is filter it where the measure is equal to and I'll look at high temperatures so daily high temperatures here uh, so I filter it down to just that data uh, and then I am going to join it with the cluster stations on the SID column. Okay, and so that should give me a data frame that has the all the data that is high temperatures from any station that is in cluster number 441. I'll go ahead and I'll show this. And we can run that. Of course, we're still doing all the clustering that we had been doing before. And then we're going to pull in a very large file and uh, do a join on it. So this is an operation that can take a little bit of time. Um, and you know, we could potentially limit this in, in certain ways. But this is really the data that, that we want to work with. Okay, so here we have the... Uh, table for the cluster data. You can see we have these IDs 
all of these are for January 1st. They are all T maxes. Uh, these are the values. If you go look at the documentation, these might seem like really weird temperatures. This is actually Celsius in tenths of Celsius. So this is actually 23.9 degrees Celsius here. So that appears to be working. We'll come back and I'll plot this up so that you can see what the T maxes look like over the year. And then I can explain what I want to use a linear regression for to try to fit that data.